205-448-1358. Number to call in, 205-448-1358. We grab a call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How are we feeling? State your name and where you're calling from. Hi, Stephen. Bill from New York. And I got pretty strong feelings about what I'm about to say tonight. If, uh, I read his statement, and I respect it. He didn't blame the cops. He didn't blame anybody but his own self, let's say. You know, he didn't blame anyone but himself. He apologized. I think he could use this as an opportunity to teach players. To see, look what this cost me. This might have cost me, like, millions of dollars in a raise might have caused me a shot at a head coaching job. It's got to be postponed if it ever happens. Now, if it happens again, I say there's a problem. But, you know, like the Bible says a bunch of stuff about glass houses, you know, throwing stones and judging, you know. And li listen, the guy made a mistake. It was a bad one. It was a bad one. But I love the way he responded. And I'd love to hear what you think about what I had to say, Stephen. Absolutely, Bill. I mean, I thought Pete Golden, from reading his statement, he was very remorseful. And, and, and knowing Coach Pete, you know, he wants this opportunity to coach at Bama. I remember when he was at the podium 2019 uh, as the primary defensive coordinator during the media portion of Fan Day. He talked about it. This was the job he always wanted. He wanted nothing else but to be at Alabama and work for under Coach Saban and just coming after his best recruiting performance on win in this cycle and Coach Saban lavishing praise on him and how much these young men love him and respect him. He's hurt. He's hurt by the decision that he made. My thing is, is that, like you said, uh, Bill, that he learns from this, that he grows from this, that he gets better from this, and that he is able to have that second opportunity. Appreciate uh, Bill from New York for that call right there. Hey, Steve, it's Robert from Chicago. Robert, what's happening, man? Hey, uh, I'm doing pretty good. Hey, I'm going to go a different direction with Pete Golding. Um, you know, as Roger Kipling said, there are a million reasons for failure, but not one single excuse. And to me, this this is just a flagrant um, situation where he's a grown man. He should know better. Um, I, I think you got to have a zero tolerance policy with uh, this type of behavior. You know, the way I look at uh, performance is, you know, the three scenarios. If you have great performance and great values, you're onward and upward. You got a great career. If you have good values but poor performance, hey could learn again, train again, get a second and third chance. But if you have good performance and poor values, the natural tendency is to do what you guys are saying. Well, give them a second chance. The numbers are looking better. That's the hard decision. That's the decision where you got to say, you know what? Values trump performance. Because without values, you don't have culture. Without culture, you don't have integrity and authenticity. And in my mind, uh, Pete Golding knew the issues. He knew the odds. He knew the situation. But, you know, he decided to make Jim Beam and Jack Daniels his two best friends. And that's a problem. And how can you be credible when you got a situation like Henry Ruggs that everybody should have learned from in Alabama, and then you got the defensive coordinator out drinking heavily? And uh, irregardless of his statements of remorse, uh, I think you got to send a signal. Uh, a crystal clear signal to the team, to the university, that there's zero tolerance for this type of behavior. And you know, thank God nobody got hurt, but he knew the stakes when he was doing that. And I think it was arrogant on his on his behalf. And I think that same type of arrogance uh, is a problem down the road. And uh, hopefully he can be like Steve Sarkeesian and, uh, you know, be out for a while and then come back and be a better coach. But I think to immediately reward him and give him a second chance is not the right decision. I'm sure I have a dissenting view, but uh, that, those are my thoughts. Thanks. Appreciate Robert from Chicago for his thoughts here on the show. Appreciate yeah, this is Sammy from Grand Bay, Alabama. Sammy, what's happening, man? Nothing much. I'm going to piggyback off with the last guy. See, it's almost like he must have been in my brain I'm exactly 1,000% with him. I do not think that Pete Golden needs to be the defensive coordinator at Alabama any longer. You got to be smarter than that. I'm I'm sorry. You got to be smarter than that. And if you're going to go out celebrating or whatever he may have been doing, 
he's I'm sure he's heard Coach Saban and everybody else get to a daggum Uber, taxi, Lyft, whatever these these things are, because it's just too dangerous. And I agree with what um, uh, Rob, uh, sorry, I don't know his name, the guy who just called before me. It's arrogant, absolutely arrogant to think that, oh, I just had a nice three, four games of calling them defensive plays, and then I just had a nice recruiting class. I can do whatever the heck I want to do. No, absolutely not. You just you just can't do it. What if he would have hit somebody? What if, what if it would have been a situation like Henry Ruggs? I hate to even bring it up, but let's just call it what it is. You can't do it. I'm sorry. And you've got impressionable young kids. How are you going to go into a defensive uh, meeting and say, hey, guys, don't do this, don't do that, and then you're out there doing not just drinking, but you're going and driving, and then you get arrested for doing it. I mean, we we're hey, look here. We know what it is. All these kids, they're going to do what they want to do. They're going to go out drinking. When I was in school, I had a lot of buddies. They did the same things, and we it was wrong. Of course, they knew it was wrong, but they still did it. And he just so happened to get caught. But it could have been a whole lot worse. And I agree, Nick Saban needs to make a 1,000% statement and just cut bait and cut him loose. And I hope that it just rings all throughout the program because we ain't no daggum Auburn. And I don't really care about what's going on with their coach and whatever he's doing, but we don't tolerate stuff like that at Alabama. And I know Nick Saban's not going to tolerate it, and at least I hope that he doesn't. He's got my unequivocal support if that's exactly what he decides to do. So I'm going to get off this little uh, soapbox here, and I'm just, just I just want to go ahead and, and state that. But I, I think that it's just time. I'm sorry, you just can't make those types of mistakes when you got control. If this, if this was like a, a grad assistant or something like that, and he just did something stupid, then that's a more of a teachable moment. But Pete's darn near 40 years old. You got to know better than that. But um, I appreciate you for taking my call. I'll hang up and listen and uh, enjoy the show. Appreciate Sammy for the call right there. I mean, uh, Coach Saban is, is stern. He's stern and he knows uh, when it comes to the University of Alabama, people want to find ways to throw dirt on the program any way that they can, but you can't give them the ammo to throw dirt on the program. So Saban will have a decision made. Believe you me, he will have a decision made when it comes down to Pete Gold. This is Mike from Jacksonville, Florida. How you doing, Steve? Mike, doing great in yourself. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a different spin on this. I'm gonna put a spin on it from a police perspective. I'm a former police officer. I'm also a retired military. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I'm slightly. I got a little cold right now. Let me say this. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody. I have seen this situation over and over again. And basically, you know, CEOs, CFOs, people in the military, school teachers. I mean, I've seen all these people get DUIs, but that doesn't stop that. That don't, that don't make them bad people. Pete Golden made a bad mistake, and I think everybody knows that. If I'm saving, this is what I would do. You know, you learn by your lessons. Have Pete Golden go out, talk to the players, talk to the student body, and make him the spokesman for DUI. That's one example, you know. But don't throw the man away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't put him in the ground and and kick him out, like some of these people are saying. You know, if he would have killed somebody, if he would have ran into a building, you know, something like that, that's a different story. You tell me, how many people have made mistakes like this with DUI? Thousands, thousands. So my perspective on it is the fact that make this a learning lesson, keep the man employed, and go from there. What's going on, Steve? Elijah here from Jersey. How you Elijah, doing? what's happening, man? Oh, man, I'm just, you know, sitting back, listening to everybody's, uh, you know, opinion about this Pete Golden uh, situation. And, you know, I I look at it and I say, we are all human. Just because these guys coach for the University of Alabama, that don't put them above or below the law. That don't make them more perfect, less perfect. We are human. We're going to make mistakes. This man made a mistake. Thank God it didn't cost anybody their life. Um, thank God 
you know, he was able to walk away from it, you know. But I wonder what these, uh, a lot of these people that's calling in and, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion, um, how would they feel if Nick Saban was in this position? Will we be burying him right now? Will we be saying, man, we got to get rid of him because this is Alabama? And to be honest with you, Nick Saban kind of set the standard for Alabama. So he knows, you know, what to do, what not to do. But let's just say that shoot was on the other foot. You know, how about Nick Saban was in this situation? Do people think he would deserve another chance? I mean, Pete Golden is a human. He made a mistake. Should he have to uh, uh, work his way back up to Saban's good graces? Of course. But at the same time, you can't bury a man for a mistake. Just be thankful and, and, and happy. Nobody got hurt in the situation because, like we said, this could have been a, a, a rug situation. Thank God it wasn't that. But um, at the same time, you know, have him go out and talk to kids. I don't think this discredits him at all. I think kids look at him and shoot. Look how many kids from Alabama that went out there and caught DUI charges, drinking and stuff like that. You know, um, I don't think this discredits him. If, if anything, it lets people know this man is human. This man can make mistakes. You know, it was a lot more uh, worse mistakes made over the years than what this man ha has done. You know, and... Um, I just don't think you put them on the cross and, and you burn them, burn them over it. Because let's let's be honest, if if Pete Golden was coaching at Wichita, uh, Wichita State, you know, or or Norfolk State, this wouldn't have been blasted all over the news. But since Pete Golden has severe ties, or, or he's a defensive coordinator for Alabama, the University of Alabama, which is a top tier program, oh, that's newsworthy. You know, that's um. That's something that they're gonna they're gonna really throw out there because now we could throw darts at Alabama. Oh, Alabama, they ain't perfect. Alabama, look, they got drunks working for them and things like that. Hell, every coach probably in 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 college football drink. It's just that he made a bad decision and decided to drive after that. But I'm kind of like with that last caller. You don't bury this man off of this. You, you, if anything, use it as a coaching lesson for him. And for everybody in the program, that listen, you got to be responsible. You got to think before you do. Nothing wrong with going out there having a drink, but get an Uber, get a taxi, call on a, 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 a an assistant coach, somebody to pick you up to to make sure you get home safely, so you don't hurt yourself and other people on the road. But man, that that's all I gotta say about that, man. I just I just don't think you. You, you set the man, you crucify the man for a, a, a mistake that he's made. You have a good good one, Steve. Fran Lee, Memphis, Tennessee. How we doing, my man? Doing fine. I just wanted to say, and I'll, I'll get off the phone, I've been a Bama fan about 50 years. This is stuff that's went on for several years with players uh, and various people with the Alabama program. Northport has a reputation for that. And I'm not saying that Pete Golden is right about what he done. But to try to destroy him, man, the trolls are real busy tonight. You have a good night, sir. Steven, how you doing, man? This is uh, Marcus from Birmingham. Hey, man, just been listening to the calls. And I uh, just want to add in and say, man, I, I agree with the last caller. You, you don't crucify a man because he made a mistake. Uh, you know, we all, you know, we all come up short. We all have done things that we're not proud of. Um, hey, you know, it, it, it happens. But let's not sit here and say the man needs to be fired and, and he shouldn't be coaching at the University of Alabama. I mean, everybody makes a mistake. But I, I don't think, you know, he did anything that to, to lose his job. Uh, it shouldn't be to a point where we can't say he's not a leader amongst those men. I think, you know, by him saying, hey, you know what, I admit my um, – I admit my mistakes. I own up to it. It's nobody else's fault. There's, you know, nobody's fault but mine. That's 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 maturity. That's being a man. That's that's him being a leader, saying, "Hey, you know what? I made the mistake. I own up to it, and uh, and you know, I'm gonna do better." So, you know, that's all I wanted to say. Just wanted to call in 
and, uh, you know, and just show support for him. That, hey, you know, he made a mistake, but we here with Coach Golden, and, uh, and let's pray for him and instead of tearing him down and so quick to throw him away. How about we pray for him and, 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 and help him out? Let's, let's talk about Pete Golden. Uh, I don't know. We've all uh, we've all done uh, stupid things in our life. Uh, no matter what age we are, from uh, high school, college, work, even as we get old, <laughs> I do silly stuff all the time. Uh, being stopped on a DUI uh, is everybody in the country going? Is this going to be the end of his is his life, his career? Uh, just because, you know, you had a little bit too much to drink. Yes, you could have got out and had an accident, and there could have been some very, very serious injuries. Uh, I see that very well. Uh, White is not quite as dumb as everybody thinks he is. Uh, it's a serious situation. But uh, that didn't happen, so uh, there's always somebody in control. Like I said, God's always on the throne. So, that's the, you know, that didn't happen, you know, and he's, we can't crucify him for one mistake. So we, you, you know, you've got to um, people. We got to let this go. We got to get behind the tide. But anyway, that's all I want to hey, say. Hey, I was calling to say about uh, Coach Pete. I think we should support him to see what's going on. If he needs some additional help, let's give him the help. But I think we should we shouldn't throw somebody away uh, because they made a mistake, uh, even though something was serious. Now, I'm not his biggest fan. I'm one of those one, one of those fans that was questioning whether he should be getting rid of in general. Believe me, so I'm not saying this because I'm a fan of his. I'm just saying because to be fair to him as a human being, and I don't even drink at all. So I'm not. It's not because I have a, a problem like that myself at all. I don't even drink at all. But again, it's to be fair, human to human. I think we should try to check everything out and get a man a fair chance. Hey, this is uh, Kyron from Albuquerque. Kyron, what's going on, man? Nothing, man. So just my little quick two cents on the, on the matter. Um, I think we need to stop with, with all the talk about not throwing him away, not crucify him. Um, I mean, I get it's a mistake, but this is something that was very, very avoidable, especially when you're working with young men. You know, all, all he had to do was, was call an Uber. That's all he had to do. And, and, and because he did not do that, um, I, don't, I don't know if, if that's something that can elicit, you know, a second chance. I mean, all he had to, all he had to do was make the right decision in that instance, knowing 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 where he where his position is in the program, knowing the the young men that he's working with. You know that's that's the one thing you cannot do, especially in regards to making good decisions uh, with, in terms of substance abuse. Uh, everything that went on with Henry Ruggs is like the one thing you cannot do, and, and he went and did it. So I feel I feel that you know it's got to be a zero tolerance, zero tolerance policy uh, in regards to that. Hey, Stephen, this is Mike from Kentucky. How you doing, brother? Mike, doing fantastic, man. What's going on? Hey, I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, just dumbfounded, to, for the lack of a better word. I mean, what's Pete Golden thinking, man? He, uh, the dude's, what's he got to be making a million a year? I think he's at one point two million. You know, it, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it don't get no more high profile than being at the University of Alabama. You know, I get making a mistake, but there's a big difference between an 18, 19 year old young man making a mistake and a 40 year old man making a mistake. I think, uh, you know, you got to hold him to a different standard than a than a young kid coming up. But I'm gonna let Nick Saban decide that. <laughs> You know, I'm not. I'm not going to throw my lot either way on. Hey, good evening, brother. Todd, man, checking in from Jackson, Mississippi. T- Todd, man, what's happening, man? Man, I'm doing well. Good conversation tonight, and I, with Pete Golding, I confess that I'm actually kind of conflicted listening to all the callers. I think all of them have made good points, and I actually pretty much agree with everything everyone has said. I am. Um, I am sort of concerned. I do think there's a difference between, as one caller mentioned, young men, young 18, 19-year-old men who make mistakes. And as Saban has said before, you know, do you want a kid who's made a mistake? Do you want him to be out of school, back on the streets, back in a negative environment? Or do you want him here continuing to further his education where he can have an opportunity to go on and lead a productive life in society? Um, and so he believes in second chances and third chances. 
Uh, and even as far as hiring coaches that have had checkered careers like Steve Sarkeesian and Lane Kiffin, giving those guys second chances. But it might be a little bit different when your own coach on the team right now, when your whole message is about the process. And you tell these kids it doesn't matter if you're a four- or five-star how talented you are. If you're not doing things the right way, if you're not going to class, if you're not showing up to meet team meals, if you're not executing the fundamentals, if I can't trust you to do the right thing on the field and off the field, then I don't care how talented you are, you're not going to play. So I wonder how that message is going to translate to Pete Golding if there are no kind of consequences for Pete Golding from Nick Saban. And um, I don't know if Pete Golding would, would tolerate or accept sort of a demotion for a year to to maybe go up in the box or be demoted to an analyst, uh, take a little bit of a pay cut and say, we, we want you to hang around so you can move back onto the sidelines and be our head quarter, co- coordinator next year. Um, I don't know if that's something that Nick Saban could do, if Pete Golding would accept that. Um, but I do think it is different. It is just different because he is a coach. He's supposed to be one of the leaders. He's supposed to be one of the people teaching the kids under his tutelage about the process and the principles of the process. So it's a tough call. But I think ultimately, like some people have said, Nick Saban always seems to make the right call and the right judgment in regards to these things. And once again, I'm going to defer to the GOAT to do the right thing and make the right decision, and I'll stand behind him whatever he decides to do. But those are just my thoughts on it. And uh, it is a serious thing. Like somebody brought up Henry Ruggs, this uh, drinking and driving thing, driving intoxicated, it, it is sort of a – I have sort of a zero-tolerance policy for this because it's not just you're making a mistake that affects you. You're making a, a mistake that is putting the lives and welfare of other human beings in in danger. And I think that is something that needs to uh, – just can't be tolerated on any, on any level. You know, that's my two cents on it. Not that I haven't made mistakes. Not that I haven't done that before in my life, you know, um, like so many people have. But I'm not coaching a football team. I'm not trying to teach 18, 19-year-old kids to do the right thing. So, uh, anyway, it's easy for me to sit here and make these comments. But uh, So, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn, like I said, torn between it. But I will defer to the GOAT. And whatever happens, I'll stand behind it and, w- and wish him well. Hey, Stephen, it's Mattress Matt uh, in Mobile. You know, Pete Golding could turn this into something positive, you know, if he really handles it the right way. You know, if he, if he, come, if he comes at it with a lot of humility and, uh, and he's humble and he, and he just says, you know, uh, I don't know if he has a problem or not, but, you know, if, if, he, if he could come out and say, you know, I've had a, I've struggled with alcohol off and on in my life, and I'm and I'm uh, I'm ready to make a change. And I hate that this happened, but I've accepted responsibility, and I'm uh, you know I'm gonna make it a point you know not to drink or something like that, and go maybe go get some some help or something, and uh, and say you know I'm gonna dedicate my life to helping other helping other people. Uh, uh, you know, with 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 uh, with their substance abuse problems, and maybe you know, turn this into a positive thing. I, th- I think a lot of people nowadays have a lot of uh, have a lot of leniency and, and compassion for you know substance related problems, especially when they when people when people you know admit 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 their problem and uh, admit that they have a disease and 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 go and go get help and. And, and approach it with with humility and uh y- you know uh and 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 if he if he you know this might have just been a slip up and maybe he doesn't ever drink you know maybe he can't handle his alcohol i don't know you know if you don't ever drink and then you go out and you have a drink you know you know especially after you know maybe a good recruiting day they went out and celebrated and and if he if he doesn't drink a lot and you know he had a bunch of you know liquor on an empty stomach you know if you don't have a tolerance you know you don't really have the ability to make the decision to call uber you'd have to do that ahead of time and get and get a couple of people to hold you to hold to make sure that uber gets called well you know he's a full-grown man you know he doesn't have to have people taking care of him and so he probably didn't plan all that out ahead of time and then he goes out there and if you get a great buzz going 
you know, sometimes you want to go, you know, you want to get in your car and drive, you know, you don't, you don't have the ability to make a rational decision when you're drunk. So it's, it's easy to say he, he could have called Uber, but you know, Hey, you have seven or eight shots of liquor on an empty stomach and tell me if you have the rationality to call Uber. Um, you might, but you got to kind of do that ahead of time before you get drunk. But, um, but, uh, you know, if he, if he could get sober and I'm, I'm a proud, I'm not shy about it. I'm a proud member of Alcoholics Anonymous and, uh, it led me to a relationship with God. It, le- it led me to, it, it, it changed my life. I mean, I had no, I had alcohol problems myself. I had no, uh, I had no direction in life, you know, 15 years ago. I had no, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was depressed. I had anxiety. I had social anxiety and, um, and I used alcohol to, you know, as a social lubricant and as, you know, it was, it was my solution, you know, alcohol. And, and, uh, um, and I tell you, you know, it, it can be a blessing in disguise if you can, if you can, you know, get sober and, and have a, a program that gives you, you know, have a relationship with God and, you know, it can change your life, probably make him a better defensive coordinator than if he, than, than if he, you know, didn't have a life of recovery, you know? And so, uh, I have compassion about this, but, uh, but he needs to do the right thing and, uh, you know, be humble. And, and I, and I think, you know, he'll, 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 he can be better off because of it. So, uh, uh, I appreciate your show. I love, I love your show and, uh, Hope you have a good good weekend. Enjoy the uh, Alabama Kentucky game tomorrow night. Absolutely, mattress Matt from Mobile with that call right there. And uh, before we go to break, John, I just want to say this: this is the reason why I enjoy doing this show. This is the reason why right here, because as much as I enjoy talking Crimson Tide football, and I've been doing this since I was two years old as a kid with a, with a pamper on, and a pin behind my ear, and me yelling at ESPN on TV at that age. As much as I enjoy talking Crimson Tide football, I enjoy having these types of conversations with you, the fans, because like I mentioned, you drive the channel, you drive the excitement, you drive the passion, you feel the the love affair that is college football and college sports in general. So I greatly appreciate all of you guys for having or or being engaged in this conversation. (laughs) 